Welcome to Character Design and Creation Week 2. So week one's out of the way. Uh, how do you guys feel you did in week one? Well, not too bad. Okay. Cool. Pretty good. Now it's a pretty easy ease into all of the uh, assignments again, right? Um, we will be grading those assignments come, I believe, Wednesday, we're going to try to get a section done, and then Thursday. So if you don't have grades all the way in Friday, email us and let us know. Remember, grades are going to be posted in your self-assessment sheets in your Dropbox folder. Uh, speaking of Dropbox folders, I had a bunch of really strange emails of students trying to share folders through stuff like SugarSync and Google Drive. Um, and we don't use SugarSync or Google Drive. Uh, we do use Google Drive for sharing our stuff to you guys because anything else this was too small. Um, but as far as sharing your Dropbox or sharing your folder and your self-assessment sheet, that needs to be done through the Dropbox, okay? So if you shared through Google Drive, that's not right. Make sure you're reading the CDC class setup because it's all there in black and white. And I even put pictures. So come on, I made it easy. Um, also, I got some uh, emails asking me to chat through Evernote. Um, if you need to chat with me, please come to me during my open office hours through iChat um, or go see Marcus and Google Hangout or iChat. Don't just send us random weird little messages. I wasn't even aware that you can chat through Evernote. Did you guys know that? <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't know that. iChat's basically AIM or messages. Okay, if you have AIM, yeah, there you go, or messages, you just add our names that are in the instructor contact information activity on FSO. You add those to your friends list, and then you'll see us come on during the contact times. Okay? Cool. And if you don't see us on during those times, um, I know that if you have, like, before we used to use iChat, so we finally got messages, but if you have iChat and you're trying to talk to us, sometimes you won't see us on because there's some sort of weird compatibility issue between uh, messages and iChat. So if you don't see us on during those times, email us and say, hey, I can't see you, something going on. And we'll try to figure it out with you. <laughs> um, so that's all I had to say. If you didn't share a Dropbox yet, um, unfortunately you're going to get the zeros on all of your week one assignments, as we mentioned last week. Um, you did have all of last week as well to get that checked with either Marcus or myself through open lab and my open office hours. So hopefully you guys are good to go. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say for now about week one stuff. Are there any questions about anything we covered in week one? Anything that you were a little confused about? No? I mean, we did have a question earlier um, about, are we going to review the troubleshooting assignment? And I did want to go to I did want to let you guys know here in the for the archivers, um, if you want to go over the troubleshooting assignment, because that assignment's kind of like a quiz, we will let you know if you miss certain areas in your self-assessment sheet. But if you want to review it and see how to fix those areas, um, come to get help in our open labs or open office hours, okay? And let's see, went to chat on Friday with Marcus. Um, is that a question? Because he should be. He's available Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 5 till 9. Okay. Um, the relax tool. What about the relax tool in Maya? And which assignment was this attached to? So that I kind of know what you guys are looking at. Is this in the troubleshooting? You're not sure. Um, let's see, I can show you the, the relax tool really quickly in Maya. Um, so let me load the up uh, Maya really quickly. And by quickly, I mean in the next 15 minutes or so because my computer <laughs> likes to take its time opening Maya. Okay. All right, Andrew, thank you. That helps me kind of get a better idea of uh, the assignment and what you guys are talking about. All right. So just for example's sake, I'm going to go ahead and create a polygon sphere. No, let me go ahead and go down here. And actually, that's enough divisions. This is huge. Get over there. 
All right, so if you want to use the relax tool, this is actually found in the sculpt geometry tool, which you can find here on the polygons tab. Like here's the polygons tab, and then that's the icon for it. Okay. And then you can also find it, I believe in the, they moved everything around. <laughs> um, there is a, let me see here. There is an option in here as well somewhere. It's probably in here. Here we go. Sculpt geometry tool. See, everything used to be in two menus, and now they split it up into three, and I can't find anything. Um, so you can activate this. Make sure your geometry is in object mode, and then click on the little box next to it. And these are all different sculpting things or settings you can use. Um, so we have push, pull, smooth, and then relax. This is the one you guys are asking about. And then pinch, I really never use this one. I'm not even sure. This is slide. I never use this one in a race. Never use this one either. I, I never even use these. Um, so when you're using this tool, as you guys can see, when, when we mouse over, all right, so when we mouse over, I have a brush here. And if I hold down B, my pen lets me, there we go, and middle mouse drag, that will change the size of the brush, okay? Now, what you want to make sure of is that your max displacement is set pretty low. Otherwise, you're going to end up really overworking these areas and smoothing out any detail that you actually put in. So really quick, I'm going to show you guys the push. Okay, and I don't know if you can see it, but on my brush, do you see the PS on the top left? Let's see, there it is. It's on a face now. If I hold down shift, that changes any brush to smooth. Okay, so really quickly, if I'm using push or pull or relax, I can hold down shift and it will, it's the hot key for smoothing, which is really nice because you never have to go in here and actually click it. Okay, um, I typically leave auto smooth off. It's up to you if you want to play with it and see what it does. Basically, it it tries to keep your geometry nice and smooth as you work. Um, but because we have the relax tool now, I don't typically use it. So just really quickly, if I use this, actually, I'm going to bump up the displacement a bit more. You can see I can just really quickly move my geometry around, okay? And I was in ZBrush earlier, so I'm kind of <laughs> I'm trying to just move out here. Um, so there we go. We... Let me hide the grid. Push in our geometry. I'm going to just mess it up so you guys can see how the relax tool works. Okay. So there we go. It's really wonky and awful. Um, but now if we go in and I use the relax tool, let me actually bump this down a little bit again. Not that far. Goodness. All right. Um, so what the relax tool does is, let me kind of explain it real quick. So we have a brush here, right? And basically it does a thing called averaging vertices. So what it's going to do is it's going to look in this area at all the verts. So this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. All right. And it's going to say, okay, I have vert one, two, and three. I want to make sure vertice two is in between one and three. Okay. So when I use this brush, if we take a look, see it tries to even it out, make it nice and neat again. Um, so this helps sometimes with density issues. If you guys are running into density issues, um, let's say in week three when you're resurfacing. Now for something like this, it has a harder time. So you might need to smooth it down because really there's not enough geometry to support that much of a bulge. Okay, but it kind of goes in and tries to even things out. Now, again, a huge disclaimer on this is if you're, if you're using this a lot, like if I keep going in and I keep painting, it's going to just smooth out anything that you've done. All right. So you will be using this tool in week three, probably when you're done resurfacing. Yeah, so use it, use it like sprinkles on it, <laughs> on top of the cupcake. All right. And if you if you've already used it for the troubleshoot assignment, that's cool too. Um, but for those of you who didn't know about it, or if you were unfamiliar with it, now you kind of know how it works. All right. Does that answer your question on how to use the relax tool? And you're welcome anytime. Awesome. Yeah, I just want to make sure you guys are cool with it and good to go. But um, that'll probably be something again. Maybe you might actually use it this week to help you even out density if you're modeling the head, which you are. Um, or maybe if 
if the ear is giving you a hard time, sometimes that helps to kind of clean up your geometry as you're working. So just remember it's there, but use it very, very, very carefully. I know I said it like three times now, but um, it w it'll just knock all the detail out of your model very fast. All right, were there any other questions on week one stuff? No? Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and move into week two. All right, so what are your assignments this week? What do you guys have to do this week? You're building, lots of building. Simple build, yep. What else? The ear and the head. That's right. So you have a lot of building this week. Now, let's start with the simple builds, okay? This guy's like, noise. <laughs> um, simple builds is a pretty cool assignment because you get to use Maya. All right, so when we think about building in Maya, I kind of think of like Legos. Faces are almost like Legos when we're extruding. It's almost like snapping Legos together. And almost if we used all regular square Legos, it would almost look like edge flow even. So when we build in Maya, we're kind of building sometimes from a cube up or cutting in and adding more geometry that way. So Maya kind of builds like Legos. Um, the second way you will be building is inside of ZBrush. How, have you guys used ZBrush before? I know you might have done the DynaMesh a little bit with the pillows. Yep. So we're going to show you guys Z-Spheres. Have you guys played with Z-Spheres at all? You have not. Okay. That's okay because we show you guys from the ground up, so that's perfectly fine. Um, now, Z-Spheres are typically used... Um, just to have a base mesh and a start inside a ZBrush. A lot of the time, they, they kind of come together like these little, what are these called? Tinker toys, right? So if we look at how these are kind of built, this is almost how Z-spheres work, except when we, we're working in Z-spheres, you'll put down a sphere, and then when you put down a new sphere and move it, it gives you almost like a little tunnel, okay? so kind of think of working with these spheres as like working with these tinker toys. All right. That'll kind of help you to get your mind around. Okay. So when I'm building like this, it works like this. Uh, the next one that we have is DynaMesh. And I think you guys, as you mentioned earlier, you use DynaMesh for the pillow project, right? So you guys know that working with DynaMesh is like working with a digital clay. And if you didn't do the pillow assignment, I know it was optional on MCR, and then you might not have used DynaMesh, which again is okay because we will be showing you guys how to get started with DynaMesh. Okay, so DynaMesh is almost like a, an infinite digital ball of clay, which is pretty awesome. A lot of traditional sculptors, do I have any traditional sculptors here? Anybody? Yeah, okay, cool. So a lot of traditional sculptors, once you get familiar with the tools inside of ZBrush, um, a lot of people really enjoy using DynaMesh, especially the traditional sculptors. Um, some other people might prefer using Z-Spheres to get started. Either way, you're going to end up with something to sculpt on in the end, right? These are just to help you create some sort of base mesh. Um, somewhere to get started. Now, Z-Spheres, a lot of the times when you guys are watching the videos, have you ever watched somebody do a speed sculpt on YouTube just out of curiosity to see how they approach modeling? Okay, so if you haven't, just go, just go into YouTube and watch somebody do a speed sculpt. Most of the time, they'll probably start with Z-Spheres, especially if they're using ZBrush, uh, because this is a really quick way just to bang out proportions, move things around really quickly, and you don't have to Z back and undo quite as often. Um, so they're pretty cool. Uh, let's see. So I wanted to tell you guys, before we jump into ZBrush, I wanted to tell you guys some file types here. And this is a page you probably want to screen grab, hint, hint, for your notes. Um, so there's three different types of file types inside of ZBrush. There's a document. And this document's kind of like the canvas that you're working on within ZBrush. If you save this out, it's only going to save out like a 2.5D file with color information. This will not save out your model as a 3D model. So when you're saving out your models, you want to use ZTLs or you want to export as OBJs, which I'll show you guys. 
Um, ZTLs are, are Z tools. All right. ZTLs are short for it. Um, so you want to use this all the time for exporting your, your models or saving at least as you're working. This will save your Z spheres. And the cool thing about this is it saves your subtool information. So subtools are almost like um, Photoshop layers inside of Photoshop. This will save different layers of geometry, which is really nice. Are all the nope, these are not available on sculptures. You guys need to use ZBrush for these assignments, okay? All right, sorry about that. My cat was getting into papers and ripping around here. All right, so OBJs. <laughs> I'm, okay, Joshua, if you really want Windows, then you should contact Full Sail. I can't really do anything about it. I see you keep saying that in chat here. Um, Windows and the ZBrush UI, I kind of have no control over, so maybe maybe contact somebody else that can do something about it, all right? Um, so back to OBJs. Now, these are something that you guys have heard about inside of Maya, right? Export is OBJ. This is kind of our backup. If something crashes and goes crazy on us and our model's a mess, sometimes you can say, okay, I'm going to export an OBJ and import it into a clean scene, and hopefully that'll clean it up, right? So that's something that we usually use to save ourselves. But the cool thing is this is how we get, let's say, a base mesh from Maya into ZBrush and import that right into ZBrush. And then start, we can sculpt on that. Um, so you can also export the OBJs from ZBrush as well. And then you can go in and continue working on them as far as resurfacing or saving later as a ZTL, whichever. Is it the same for 4R4? Yes. Um, if you are in 4R4, you might want to see about getting, I think, since you guys have actual ZBrush licenses, see about upgrading to the latest version, okay? Because I know you guys should be able to do that. Okay, cool. But make sure you do that, because I, I know that it should be the same for 4R4, but I think you want the newer DynaMesh from 4R6. Yeah, it is. it can be a pain just emailing them and waiting for them to come back to you. Um, and going through, I know their websites like, oh, what's your serial number? And if you don't have that, it's you're like, oh man, <laughs> now what? But they're pretty cool. If you contact them, they'll be able to help you out. All right. Are there any questions on the file types inside of ZBrush? And I'll be showing you guys more in depth inside of ZBrush here. So for now, there's no questions. Okay, cool. So let's take a look. So for your assignment this week, you're going to be building three ways like we talked about. You're going to be building the character, the simple gray guy that you had in the image planes that you created in Maya by using Z spheres and by using DynaMesh, okay? So that's a big assignment right there. Then you gotta build a head and an ear. So you're technically making us five models this week. So don't slack off, this is the heavy week. Uh, when you open ZBrush, is the serial number in the top bar? I am not too sure. <laughs> um, IT just kind of set up everything on my computer for me, so I don't even know um, where that could be hidden. So I'm sorry I can't help with that. Um, okay, so jumping into ZBrush. First things first, we're going to want to make a new document. All right, so when you make a new document, typically... It's not going to fill the page, okay? It's going to be something like this, and we don't want that. This gives us a little tiny work area because, remember, our document is our canvas. So what you want to do is you want to go in to document and double. Make sure you screen grab this so you know what you're going to be doing right away. Okay, so you click on that double, and now we have a nice big work area. Yes, you will be using ZBrush for the simple build assignment. So again, you go into document and double, and I'm going to leave that open. Let me know when you guys have the screen grab. Cool. Does everybody else have it? Good. 
Um, this is basically, let me close ZBrush. I guess to show you what it does um, because I actually just are, it's a habit. I just get in and I'm like, bam, double, good to go. Uh, when you open ZBrush, it'll give you a little tiny canvas to work in. See it? Well, it's not that tiny, but see how the gradient, um, hey, I've got a, there it goes. So when it opens up, go ahead and click hide on this. We don't need that. And then if you look at the edges of the canvas, it's not filling this whole area. And our Mac screens are already really tiny, so we want to make sure that we fill this whole area. So we tell our canvas, so that's why we go into document and double. That fills the area better. See what it did? So now we have our full area is filled in with canvas space rather than just a little piece of it. Okay, so that's what that does. Now, we're gonna want to import an image plane, right? So I'm gonna show you guys one way to do it. I know PRM shows you guys another way, so you have multiple ways to do this. But I'm gonna show you guys how to use something called Spotlight. Have you guys heard of Spotlight before? No? It's okay. It makes me feel like I'm showing you guys something new. Yay, and exciting. Okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna go into texture and import. Screen grab this, and it's right here, texture import. And I'll leave it up, let me know when you got it. And I'm, I moved my chat box to the side, but I'll just wait and see when I see a chat bubble pop up. You got it? All right, cool. So texture, import. And you're gonna to navigate to where you saved your image plane. Okay, so mine's in a whole bunch of folders here and go to training here. Two simple builds in my image plane. So I'm going to say, okay, import my image plane. And what it'll do is it imports it and you're sitting here going, oh, great. That did an awesome job. Thank you, ZBrush. Well, it's actually here in your texture drop down. Okay. So what you want to do here is you want to select your image plane image. So make sure it's highlighted. And then you're going to want to click this button. Let me do some drawings. Right here. This button will highlight. That's what you want. And thank you, ZBrush. All right. So there you go. Make sure you screen grab this because this is how to add that image plane to Spotlight. Now, typically, Spotlight is used for projection painting textures. And what that means is we lay an image over top and then we paint through it. And whatever we paint through it gets projected to our models. So we need to teach ZBrush or tell it, hey, don't project this onto my model. It'll make a hot mess on me. I just want to use this in, as an image plane. Okay, so you guys got this as your screen grab. You will use Maya. You'll use Maya, ZBrush, uh, the Z spheres, and DynaMesh. So Z spheres and DynaMesh are inside of ZBrush, and the and the Maya build, well, that one's in Maya. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and load this into my spotlight. And for some reason, this pops up again. Just hide it. Okay, so my image is in here. It gives us a little red box, and I can see it's kind of getting cut off. And this is our little uh, spotlight toolbox. It's really nice. Um, so from here, we, you actually can mouse over, and in the middle of this, you see how it says rotate, scale, pin spotlight, radius, opacity. Um, I'm going to just scale this down slightly. So I put my pen tip to the tablet, and I drag. All right, and it scales it down. You can kind of... Just rotate. All right, so that's how you bring it in, and this comma, hot, comma is hot key. Um, for the light box, yes. Um, it just brings that up. You can close it that way, too. All right, so while we have this up, if you grab on the inside, so we have two circles here. We have the inner circle and then the outer circle here. If you grab this one, number one, it will move around the entire image. If you grab number two, this little one in here, it will move only the, the spotlight box, okay? So we can center this up really nice. We can move this out of our way, and we're good to go. Now, if we want to get rid of this toolbox, because now we want to model. We don't want to be sitting here staring at this all day, right? We want to we want to get into modeling. So what you want to do is hit Z, and that will hide the spotlight 
toolbox. Um, a question here. How do you access the spotlight? Um, that was in the texture palette here when we clicked on the image plane. And then you click on this icon right here. So one, two, those are the steps you want to take in the texture dropdown. And now yours won't be orange because we have you won't have activated it already because mine's already active in, in the scene. You it's it's orange, so yeah, yours will look different. Okay, so now I'm gonna quiz you guys really quickly. How do I turn on the what's the hotkey to turn on the spotlight control box box, the little toolbox that we get? No, comma is for light box. Don't get those two confused, okay? Spotlight is for image planes and production painting. Light box just has a whole bunch of like little projects and brushes and stuff you can use. Z, Z will toggle on and off the toolbox here. Um, so remember that. Now, if I'm moving around this toolbox, which one do I wanna grab to, which circle, I'm gonna do this one or two, do I wanna grab to move around the entire toolbox and not the image? Two, that's right. So if I wanna move this around, we hit two, move it around, awesome. And if I wanna move around the image in my scene, one, that's right, so you guys got it. Okay, so Z, we're gonna hide that. So now we have our image plane in the scene, awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to get started with Z spheres, okay? Um, so first things first, <clears throat> this is where we will find our Z spheres. This is our tool palette. This is where we end up with a whole bunch of drop downs, okay? So first things first, this little simple brush right here is what we're gonna click on. And right here you will see Z sphere. Okay, so I just click on this. It's usually up by default. If it's not, let me know and I can show you guys. So you click on that golden S and then click right here on Z spheres. Maybe screen grab that so you have it. Let me know when you've got it. All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the Z sphere. And now I have to draw it out into my scene. So pen tip to the tablet and draw. Now I'm gonna hold down shift so the axis is straight. Okay, so you guys can kind of see it back there, but it's hard to see, right? I'm gonna hit T. T will take your Z spheres and put it into edit mode. Okay, you can also click this button up here. T is the hotkey, as in Mr. T. <laughs> so make sure you hit that and that will let us draw more Z spheres. But for now, I'm having a hard time seeing what's going on with my Z sphere. This isn't helping me at all. So what I want to do is I want to bring up my spotlight again, and I'm going to adjust, <clears throat> excuse me, the opacity, and bring this down a little bit. Okay, so if you're not sure which icon is what, remember, you can always mouse over. I don't have them memorized. I just wait until I see opacity. And then you just rotate it until you can kind of see it, and you can see your sphere. Hit Z, hide that again. And now we're good to go. So first things first, as I drew this out, you guys know I held down shift. Um, what that did, let me actually turn off it. Uh, let me see. How can I do this without messing it up? There we go. All right, so what that did is it locked. You guys see this middle line here? So it kind of locked it for me so it, it wasn't at an angle and it was drawn out nice and straight, okay? But what that does, let me go back into edit mode, is I can go in and start placing more spheres. Now, because we want to work, we kind of want to work symmetrically, because I'm going to start actually, I'm going to move this over and place it in the front view. Um, I want to be able to draw out my legs and not draw two of them. I just want to draw one and have the other side do the work for me. So let me actually scale this down quickly. These are the tools up here that you will be using to edit the spheres. So there's your move, scale, and rotate. If your brush is too big, and I'll show you guys this later, but if your brush is too big, you'll grab more than one 
z-sphere okay so if i'm sitting here working like this you're going to move everything within that radius so scale this bad boy down so that you're only grabbing one little sphere at a time now i want to draw more z-spheres so i'm going to go over here to draw and your hotkey is actually if you see here it's q to draw more and we're going to turn on symmetry because we want to have symmetrical legs right so I'm going to hit X, and that totally didn't do what I wanted. It's on the other side of the screen. So what do we do? You haven't seen this. That's right. I can't ask you guys that because <laughs> you won't know. All right. So as far as these spheres in the middle of the screen, it's going to try to give us symmetry. So we can actually Z back until this is in the middle. And Command Z, you guys, is undo. All right, so now if I look, we're more symmetrical here, right? I can I can see that. Oh, hey, there's my my other icon. Can you guys see that? How I have two little circles that shows us where the other sphere would be drawn? Yes. So we can move the image instead of the sphere and keep it in the center, which we could just pull up the the tools here with Z and slide this over. Okay, or, oh, oh, that's not good. Come back. <laughs> if this happens, it's not a huge deal. You can just load this back in. Okay, just like you did before. You should be good to go. All right, so another thing, now we're going to try this because it's a test. Somebody told me that we can, okay, now it's locked. I'm going to just delete this guy. Go away. If you guys run into this issue, it's kind of good this is happening to me now, so you can see, like, I can only move up and down. I can't move left and right now. Something got locked somewhere, and sometimes it happens. It's okay. Make a new document. Uh, draw in a new Z-sphere, holding shift, hit T, and you'll start over again. It doesn't take too long. It's going to move for me. Hmm. Okay, so since this isn't moving left and right, that's okay. We can move our image. So hit Z, and we can actually go, okay, which one moves it? Oh, wait, we don't need to do any of these because, hey, we can move it just like this. All right, so move your image. Hit Z, so it locks that back into place. X is already on. We can see the other sphere, the other little circle for our symmetry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use draw. So I'm going to just go ahead and draw a sphere here. And now we can just go in and edit these little uh, spheres. Now we're not going to worry about the side just yet. We're going to kind of plot all of our spheres in one view in the front, and then we're going to go to the side. Okay, so right now all we're trying to do is just match up the silhouette as close as we can. We might need to scale. It's okay. And I'm only... I'm only using a really tiny brush, so you guys can see my, my draw size is two, okay? Really tiny, because if it's any bigger, and I'm going to be able to show you, it's going to end up grabbing everything. And I don't want that. I just want to be able to scale one sphere at a time, and it's symmetrical, so it's okay. How did you get the brush tool up? All right, so there's two ways to change the size of your brush. Uh, you can hit S, and this will give you a draw size. Okay, so S is a draw size. Um, but I prefer to use spacebar. Spacebar gives me more. I can change the draw size. Um, the focal shift, which I'll explain to you guys when we go over ZBrush. Um, once we're painting, there's there's color palette here. I prefer this one just because I'm, I'm used to it. Um, but you guys can use S, too. And you just tap S. It comes up. You edit your size and then tap S again for it to go away. All right. So space bar is our hotkey for the toolbox. All right, so I'm going to just continue placing more spheres. So I'm going to place a sphere. We're going to grab move and move this guy down. Okay, and I'm just trying my best to match these silhouettes. Okay, remember, it's not going to be perfect. It's okay. We're going to make adjustments later um, that will help to make this match our reference images much better. So I'm going to scale this back up. 
And there are videos on this on um, on the actual assignment. I'm just showing you guys really quickly how to get started. So I'm going to go ahead. Remember, I'm just going. You can use hotkeys. I'm just clicking so you guys can see where to click these. So I'm just pen tip to the tablet and drag out. That gives us another sphere. And then we want to move it. Okay, so that's too big. Let's scale it down. So really quickly, I'm getting some pretty good silhouette. Right? Now, some cool things with, with these spheres. Uh, do you guys remember doing any sort of rigging inside of 3DF? Yes. Okay. So these kind of look like the joints. Remember the joints that you drew in, in 3DF? Yeah. So the cool thing is if you click on a sphere and move it, it's going to move that point. Okay. If we click on the joint, it will actually act like a bone. Okay. So you can actually click and move things really fast. If you know where to click and what to click, you're good to go. All right. So remember, you can use these. Let's say you go in the side view, which I'll show you guys in a minute, and your legs aren't matching because they kind of, if you look, they kind of go down at an angle. Um, but we can fix that really easy by knowing that we can click these joints and move them just like we would if we were to rig this. Okay, so I'm not going to do the whole thing. Um, I, I, but I will show you guys uh, moving to the side view. Again, I'm just going to slide this over. Okay, so that's kind of lined up. I'm going to hide this. And I'm just going to rotate the whole object. Don't use rotate up here to rotate the whole object. To rotate, now I know you guys are pretty new to this, so I'm going to cover this. If you already heard it, I'm sorry, but somebody might not have heard it before. Um, so rotating your object inside a ZBrush is really easy. You're just going to click your pen tip to the tablet outside of the model and rotate. Now when we're close to the view that we want, you can hold down shift and it will snap to the side view and it'll be a perfect orthographic side view for you. Cause sometimes we might end up like, uh, it looks good. We don't want to work like that because we have symmetry turned on. We might mess something up. So rotate as close as you can to that side view, hit shift and it will snap for you. Now we can go in and I don't want to move that, but it's okay. All right. So we got move. I'm going to just grab this stuff, move it really quickly. See, now I'm grabbing those joints and rotating them because it will keep the distance between the two spheres we already have placed. Okay. Let's rotate this a little more, bring this back. Remember, they're not going to be perfect. It's okay because once we're done with this, we're going to create something called an adaptive skin. And then we're going to go ahead and sculpt it to make it match 100% exactly to the reference images. Let me go ahead and move this over a bit more. Move this guy a bit. Bring him forward. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> um, well, I have been doing this for a little bit. Don't forget, guys. I mean, it's all going to come with practice. And we understand, you know, this is the first time you guys are doing this. Um, so... It, you know, it, it's going to be difficult to do. All right, so I've got my guy here. We've got legs. Um, this is probably where you want to go in and maybe draw out your feet, right? Put down your sphere. I'd probably bring it to the front and see what's going on just really quick. Drop this down, snap it to the side, line it up again. Probably make sure it's there. There we go. Draw another sphere, and now we can actually bring this out and we can have some toes. You might want to actually put two here. Um, let me scale this down. I see you guys are talking in chat, but I have the screen off to the side, so give me one moment and I'll take a look at that. All right. And that's not good. We want to draw on this guy. There we go. Just remember, if it, if it messes up, just Command Z and back it out and try again. It's okay. This is going to take practice. Don't be expecting to go in here and be like, I'm done because it rarely ever works like that, right? As much as we would like to be super awesome right away. Now, things like the feet, you know, we're not gonna be able to get this shape here until we go in and start sculpting. Yes, uh, Jason, I, I just looked over here at the chat. 
when we're moving again, if we mouse over, like if I move and move, when we click on different spheres, we'll actually get these icons. Remember, make your brush really tiny because we only want to move one sphere at a time. And once we click on a sphere, we'll get the option for the joints. Okay. So the round part is for the sphere. The triangle part is for the joint. And what's really cool is uh, recently they actually brought in a way to use Z spheres to rig models and pose them inside a ZBrush. Before it was kind of a pain because you had to mask it and re-sculpt and mask and re-sculpt and shape. It's a pain. Um, but now that you can use Z spheres to actually rig and pose a character, that's pretty cool. It's a really, really nice feature. Okay, so once we're to this point, let's pretend the entire thing is done. Um, I'm going to actually snap it to the front view. And as you're working, now this is something I probably should have brought up sooner, so I'm sorry. Um, but if you hit A as you're working, A for adaptive skin, it will show you what your mesh is going to look like. Can you guys see that? So it's a preview. What I suggest doing is going up here, saving out that Z tool. Now I've been working on a project, but I'm going to save it to my desktop. You guys have another folder where you want to share it or save it rather. Don't share it yet. <laughs> so we're going to call this uh, Z-Sphere guy. Okay, save that out. And as you guys can see, here's our ZTL. Remember how I told you guys these are for 3D objects inside of ZBrush, ZTLs. So I'm going to save that. And now, before I turn this into an adaptive skin and begin sculpting, I have a backup. In case I really mess up my sculpt, I can open up my Z-Tool with the Z-Spheres and create a new adaptive skin. So, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and load a fully done version. Let's see. I have it here. There we go. And I do. I just hope this isn't the one where I messed it up. All right, so here he is. It's kind of crooked. It's okay. I'm going to go ahead and bump down the opacity just a bit more so you guys can see him. All right, so here he is. This is what the um, student had put together. It wasn't too bad. He's a little crooked on the axis. We could probably straighten him out. Straighten his head out, straighten his neck out. This is probably a situation where we can actually use larger brush to grab the whole head. It lets me. There we go. Yeah, he's a little crooked, but it's okay. We can actually kind of fix it up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit A. We see our nice adaptive skin here. Okay. Now, it's not perfect, right? If we look again and get the opacity and crank it back up, he kind of has the same shapes, but we can see that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Okay, so what we want to do, let's bring this guy, stop flickering. It's probably me. I'm probably doing something wrong. There we go. So we got this guy. Now, A, again, we're previewing our adaptive skin. Now, to create the skin, you want to go down here. I know there's a ton of tool palettes in this, and at first it can be overwhelming, but once you get used to it, it's not so bad. I do wish they were a little more streamlined in the UI. I think um, one of you was mentioning that earlier. But, hey, once you get used to it, it's not bad. So we're going to click on Adaptive Skin. From here, we can preview as well. If I hit A, you can see that highlights. So basically that's all we're doing is previewing. Now we have some pretty nice density. That'll be nice for sculpting. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this button down here that says make adaptive skin. Now what that does is it makes it so that I can sculpt on this geometry and actually use it. So now I can actually go in. Let me see if I can scale them up and fit them in here a little better. But I can use tools in my brush palette. Okay, so you can either go over here and click to get to your brush palette. All right, so I can close that again. Or you can hit B and pull it up and then select a tool you want to use. Another really cool trick, let's say I want to use this move tool, okay? B, yep, B as in boy. So B as in boy or brush. That'll pull up my brush palette. Now move, okay, we can select that. Or once you get used to your hotkeys, so B, 
let's say I, I'm having a hard time finding move. Let me, I know it starts with M. It will actually highlight everything that starts with M. And then you guys see this red, this little orange, it's not red, am I colorblind? <laughs> the little orange T in the, in the corner there, or the V, you guys see these? What that means is if I hit B, M, and then V, I will get this tool. So let me show you guys. Let me close this out. B, I want to use move. Here's the one I want to use, V. And then up here, it's selected. Pretty sweet, right? So that works with any brushes. So let's say another one of my favorite brushes is inflate. So B, I, because I know it's inflate. Oh, there we go. And N, because that's what I want to use. And it's highlighted. Does that make sense? Once you guys get in here and start playing with it, you will definitely start remembering your favorite tools you want to use. And you'll just be like BMV or BIN and, and you'll know. Uh, Christina, you say it's confusing. What's confusing? A 3D, 3DF went over hotkeys inside of ZBrush? Wow, I'm surprised. I didn't even know they do ZBrush. The different tools are confusing. Um, okay, well, let's not get too overwhelmed. Um, all of these tools, when I hit B, these are all sculpting tools that you can use to edit this geometry that we have on our scene. Now, the tools I suggest using and sticking to is the move tool. So that's B, right? We got B, M, V, and that pulls up our move tool. Right, so this is really nice. Let me actually, we can scale this down a little bit and go in and just start making really large movements. Okay, this is where you can make bigger brushes and it's, it's fine. So we wanna just move these around. Now, because we're using uh, this spotlight system, we do want to do something before making these moves, okay? Because remember what I told you guys earlier, spotlight's usually used for projection painting. So we need to go into our brush and we need to tell it not to paint because we don't, we really don't want that. So there's two things I typically turn on here. Let's see. Is it in? See, I even get lost in here sometimes, so it's okay. <laughs> now you can actually turn on I turn on back face masking. So again, if you guys go into brush, brush, auto masking, and then back face masking. I like this because what it does is if I'm moving something in the front, it's not going to click all the way through to the back and pull everything. Okay. Cause I, I hate that. It's one of my like pet peeves. Cause what happens is if we're working on something really thin, like the ankle here and you have a bigger brush, if we turn this into the front view, it's going to be a little skinny pole. That's probably like twisted up inside of itself. Not cool. All right. So again, to do that, that's in brush, auto masking, back face mask. So make sure if you're having a hard time and geometry is pulling into itself, turn that on. And to turn off the, the painting, so like when, when we're using this uh, spotlight, it will try to paint. You can actually go into brush, samples, and turn off spotlight projection. We don't want that orange. Okay, so screen grab that. Because if you do this, you're going to start painting on your model and you're going to freak out. I'll get at least, I'm, I bet you I'll get one person that sends me a message. Oh my gosh, I painted all over. I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> so make sure you turn off spotlight projection. Okay. All right. So now that we're in here, I'm going to, again, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to use a big brush. This is where we can use big brushes. Oops. Use big movements. And that's quite all right. So now what you're going to do, is you're going to just start moving things. And because I have back face masking on, this is where things like, I don't know, working in the side view don't really work. So remember, you can turn this on and off. I'm going to turn it off again. Um, when I get around to working on the arms, I'll probably go in and probably turn that back on. So as you guys can see, 
All I'm doing here is, is grabbing and moving, trying to get my silhouette to line up. Okay, so this is where we go in and just move tool really can get you pretty far. My legs, are they're trying to move front and back. I think you guys can probably see that now. My feet are too little. Okay, so a lot of it is just big brush movements. And if you pull something like this, it's okay. You can always go to another view and just kind of smooth it out. Now, any brush with shift held down, do you guys see how my brush turns blue? That means it's a smooth. So sometimes like if you do anything like I just did and accidentally pulled something out too far, if you hold down shift, you can kind of smooth it out and fix that. It's not the end of the world. For areas like under the neck here, you can actually go in and grab it from the front view and move it down. Check it again. Because our neck is way skinnier than what we have. Now, it's very important you guys actually take the time to do a lot of shaping at this point. Just turning it into an adaptive skin and turning it in is not going to get you guys the credit for the assignment. So make sure you're taking a little bit of time to go in and shape this. Try to line it up as best as you can. Okay. Don't be afraid to scale up that brush and get large movements in here. All right, remember, once you're done in one view, grab your image, slide it over. See, so you guys can see I've, I've got a lot of shaping to do. Now for areas that are flared, like the calf muscles here, or even when you look at the top view in the arms, I know we don't have it in our reference images, but you probably will want to import that image at one point and get the shape of the arms correct. We do supply that in the week one image planes folder. I'm sure you were wondering, why do they have top view images in here, right? Well, that's so you guys can shape the arms in week two. So remember to use those and get those arms shaped. All right, so I'm just going in, shaping, pulling out forms, maybe bumping things back with shift. Now the arms look a little too short. I could always pull these out. It's not a huge deal. Now shift is pretty cool for narrowing out areas. Like if you guys just saw, I kind of smoothed out the, the bulk of the arm. Now if I do that too much, a tool that I like to use is inflate. I know I showed you guys that earlier. Um, but what inflate does is basically it looks at a surface and it pulls things out, you guys can see from the image here, it pulls things out in all directions. So we get a nice rounded shape. So like I'm doing here, we're getting some nice shape filling in the forearm area. Bumped it back too far here. And I'm just being really light with my brush. I'm not going in and pressing hard on the tablet because this is going to look at the pressure and go, oh, okay, you want to pull it out a lot? Cool, not a problem. So be real light. Um, on your on your brush and we can really quickly get this done now what I just did here in the legs um, I don't know if you guys are able to see that let me see if I can undo it it's real slight um, you see this area here that's not exactly lining up to my image plane if you hold down alt with any brush okay this is actually gonna instead of what it does so this pulls out in all directions by default if we hold down Alt, it's going to do the opposite and push in. So I went over this area and just kind of narrowed it out a little bit. Okay, so the wrist, I can narrow that out. BMV, I can switch over to my other brush. Line things up a little better. Okay, so this, as you guys can see, can take up a lot of time because once I go in my side view, look at all the shaping I have to do and correct again because of the shaping I did in the front view. So it's a lot of back and forth, front and side, front and side. You know, you have the back view, you probably will have to put a little bit of a rear end in there. Okay, so once you're done with this, make sure you save out your ZTL just as a backup. So we're gonna say, okay, this is our Z for a build, adaptive um, one. I'll just call it that. You guys are not going to be submitting it, so it's okay, whatever you name it. 
So once you're done with this and you've done all your shaping and it looks awesome, you're going to export this as an OBJ, okay? And you're going to import it into a scene with your Maya build and your Z-Sphere your Z build and your Dynamesh build. So all three of them are going to be imported into one Maya scene. Okay, so this will export this as an OBJ. Okay, so I just found that right up here under Tool. Export, right there. So this will give us OBJs, these guys here. Import, we'll import OBJs. And then save as, this is how we get ZTLs. And now to load ZTLs, let me change colors. There we go. To load ZTLs, you use this load tool. Okay. Is there a way to zoom in on the areas? Um, if you zoom, now to zoom, it's a little strange inside of ZBrush here. Let me actually tell you guys how to pan first and that'll kind of transition better into zoom. To pan, you're gonna hold down Alt or Option and this will pan the character around in your canvas or your document. Now, while you have your pen tip to the tablet and Alt held down and you're in pan mode, if you release Alt, okay, and then slide up and down, this will zoom. It's, it was probably one of the most difficult things for me to get used to. So don't be surprised if you guys have a little bit of a hard time getting used to that, it's okay. So again, Alt, pen tip to the tablet, this will pan. Release Alt, and we get zoom. Okay, but as you guys can see, the spotlight is not going to scale up with it. Another way you can use it, uh, these tools over here, move, scale, and rotate. These will do the same thing too. These will grab a 3D object and move it. Scale is here if you like using it that way, and rotates here. Yeah, so now you guys can see why earlier when I was inside of Maya, I was like, why isn't it rotating? Because <laughs> I was working in ZBrush most of the day today and playing around in there. I was like, this is stupid. What's going on? All right, so we looked at our awesome Z spheres, okay? Are there any questions on Z spheres or what? how to get it to us? You guys remember, you're exporting that OBJ so that you can import it all into one scene file with your uh, Dynamesh and Maya build on separate layers. So we only have to open one Maya file. And where, where am I going to export this as an OBJ? How do I do that? Yes, all the videos are in the activities page. And yes, Andrew, you you are correct. It's actually up here. We've got tool export, and that's how we get our OBJs to export. Good job. Good job, guys. You got it. Now, what's what's the hotkey for undo? Yes, you will sculpt the adaptive skin so that you match your image planes exactly, and then you're going to export that as OBJ. Command Z, that's right. Command Z is undo. Now if I hit Z, what's that going to bring up? What tool palette? There you go. Spotlight. It will bring up Spotlight. Okay. Now let's say, looking at, I'm going to actually pull this up. Let me get rid of that. Just hit him. Um, Let's say I want to use my move tool and I just want to do hotkeys. So I have B. What do I do then? I hit B, then M, yep, and then V, right? Because these little orange guys tell us what to hit after M. So whatever your tool starts with, like Christina, um, you got it, see? So B, let's say we want to use inflate. Inflate starts with I. And then let's look here. Inflate is right here. N. There we go. So inflate. Good job, guys. So hopefully that gives you enough information plus the videos on the activities page to get a good start on your Z-Spheres assignment. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is Dynamesh. So let me go ahead and make a new document here. And I'm not going to save because I have it. Whatever. All right. So what do you guys remember about Dynamesh? How do you make, let's say we have to have a sphere in the scene to start with. How would we make a sphere 
Never used it? Okay, nothing. <laughs> it's okay. Does anybody know how to get a Dynamesh sphere in the scene? Can't click the sphere under the lightbox tool. Okay, that's one way to do it. Um, but the problem with using the sphere under the lightbox tool is sometimes we might end up with too little geometry or resolution. Okay, so if you want to just have a sphere here to work with, what we can do is go back here to your simple brush. Okay. And then what we're going to click on is Sphere 3D. So screen grab that so you know this is how to start and get a Dynamesh Sphere. In case Lightbox doesn't work or it's not there or it just isn't enough geometry and you don't know how to update it, it's cool. You can do it this way too. So simple brush, Sphere 3D. Now this is only a Sphere 3D. It's, it's it's kind of a 2.5D object right now. We can't sculpt on this. So what you need to click, this button actually highlights up here. You see that? Make Poly Mesh 3D. So make sure it's selected. And then click that Make Poly Mesh 3D. Now on the name, you see it says PM 3D Sphere 3D. That means it's a 3D Poly Mesh. It's no longer 2.5D. Okay, so I'll grab that. I'm going to pen tip to the tablet and draw this into the scene. Now, after I do this, I'm going to hit T. That takes us into edit mode. Remember T for edit. And now we can go in and let's take a look. Oh, are we rotating? Okay. So I'm going to hit X because what this does is it lets me see what view we're in because sometimes it's kind of hard to see what side of the sphere are we looking at. Let me scale this down. X. Okay, there we go. So this is the front. Okay, so this is front view so we can actually move this over again. The How I know it's the front view, you guys see how it's mirrored now? That little red dot is following exactly what I do on the other side. So at this point this is not a Dynamesh sphere, it's just a poly sphere. So we need to turn it into Dynamesh. So to do that we're going to go down here into the geometry palette. It's like a little drop down. We're going to click on Dynamesh and now here's something that is really important, so pay attention. I like to turn on my polyframe, and what this does is it kind of lets me see. Okay, we know the poles there. Let me snap that up. There we go. So it lets me see which may, way my sphere is facing, and it also lets me see the resolution I'm working at. Because if we just crank this resolution up to 2048, that's how many how many vertices per square inch, I believe, or pixels per square inch. I forgot how Marcus explained it to me. But basically what we're going to do is end up with way too much geometry, okay? So we want to make sure we're sitting, we're going to try just creating geometry at 80 to start. Okay, so I bump that down. And if we need more geometry, we, do, we can just crank it up and re -dynamesh. So polyframe is on. This is how to turn that on. You just click that button there. Now to turn this into Dynamesh, we just click this, this button here. It will turn orange, and we will see. Let me actually turn down the opacity so I can show you guys what this did. The out of the way thing. Yeah. Okay, so what it did, if I undo this, see how I have a pull before? Once we create Dynamesh, it gets rid of that. And now this actually undid my resolution. So look at I'm sitting at 128. Look how dense this is. This is way too dense. You guys will hate it. So I'm going to actually crank this down. Let's try 32 is a good place to start. Let's re mesh. And this is much better. This, this visually is about where you should be hitting with your density on your model. Okay? So keep it about here. Once you find you need more geometry, we can always bump it up later. So now that we have Dynamesh, let me grab my image and bring it back over. Okay, I'm going to scale this down. And when I scale this down, please notice that I am not using this to scale. This is actually the scale over here, or it's also the zoom that I taught you guys by holding down Alt, pensive to the tablet, release Alt, and scaling that way. All right, so I'm going to try to scale this into here. Let me actually bump up the opacity again. There we go. Let's try to get this guy in here. Lock that down with Z, and Dynamesh is lit up, so now it's going to start acting like clay. 
So really quickly, we're gonna go in, grab our move tool. And honestly, guys, the move tool for me is probably one of my best starting points. We wanna think of primary, secondary, and tertiary forms, okay? If it gets to be anything beyond that, then you're gonna end up having a hard time. Like, let's say you started, you're not like, all right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and make his arm. Start big, start with the big shapes and work to the smaller, big to small. Okay, so. I'm just going to go in and start shaping things out. And it's not going to be perfect right away because, well, it's kind of like working in clay. Now, I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can see what this does. Take a look at our density. Now, remember, density is the, the size of our faces, okay? So this is kind of messy, all right? So when we want DynaMesh to update, you're just going to hit Control, so our my, my little brush is turned yellow. Pensive to the tablet, drag and release. And what that does, did you guys see it jump? It turned my geometry into much more even, cleaner density. Okay. Are there any questions on that before I continue? Did you guys see what that did? Maybe once more, okay. So I'm gonna undo this. So all I did is, be, this is DynaMesh. Take a look at the density, I'm gonna highlight it. So here's where my density edges are looking. We have long faces and we want them to be more square. So to update this, I'm gonna hold down Control. So it turns my, you're gonna see that your brush turns yellow. Okay. I know my colors. <laughs> it's, you're going to see that it turns yellow. Pen tip to the tablet, drag a little box out and release. And then you'll see that now our density has updated. So we have much more even geometry. Okay. So I'm going to scale this back down and I'm just going to move things out. Okay. So I'm just really quickly trying to get shape in. I'm matching my, my handy dandy awesome image planes that we made this week. Now, okay, I wanna pull out an arm. The best way that I find to do this, and this is entirely up to you guys if you wanna do it this way. Um, one way you can do it is you can just use the move tool and turn your focal shift down. Focal shift is the fall off of the brush. With how it is right now, it's more like an airbrush with a softer edge. If I turn that focal shift down quite a bit, it'll be more of a harder edge. So what I can do is just scale it down and pull some arms out. And, you know, it looks awful, I know. But once we do our update, so control, click, drag, it will add in the geometry we need. Did you guys see that? Control and drag and it added in all the geometry I need. So now I can just go in and start moving and editing my mesh. Okay, so I'm gonna use smooth here. I'm probably gonna use it again at the wrist, hand. And this is just using the move tool and shift. Okay, so don't worry about it being perfect right away. And remember, I, I guarantee you guys, if we move this to the side view, it's not gonna be pretty. Um, just visually, if we look at, I'm going to scale it up so you can see. Okay. So if visually you can do some, the closer, okay, here, I'm confusing myself here. The closer these two rings get to each other, the harder the fall off of the brush. So negative 100 is going to be a really sharp edge. Um, something more like this will give us a little bit more of a softer edge if we pull out arms. And then something like this is going to be really soft, more of like a tapered peak if we pull it out. So I usually do something maybe around 60. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly what I do. Uh, there's another way we can pull out arms and legs. Um, this is by using masking. So if you, you hold down control and your brush is yellow, I'm gonna actually turn off poly frames. You can actually paint where you wanna pull out geometry. So I wanna pull out the legs. Okay, so you guys see how it's dark here where I painted? And it's about the same size as the leg. Now, if I hold down control and click outside of my model, it's gonna invert that selection that I painted. 
So control click will invert. Now if I control click drag, that will update my geometry. So I'm just control pen tip to the tablet because I only want to pull out this area. Okay, so now I can go ahead and grab my move tool, pull it straight down. It's gonna be ugly, right? It's okay. And then update. And we can do it that way too. And if that's the way you want to do it, cool. If you want to try it the other way, not a problem. Really, uh, Dynamesh is pretty freeform. As you guys can see, I, my focal shift is way too hard right now. There we go. So remember the tools to use. Just move things around. I probably won't worry about doing the feet until I get around to the side view. All right, now my wrists are too skinny. I'm probably gonna just inflate this a bit. Yes, yeah, so you have to do a Z-sphere and a Dynamesh. Z-Sphere, Dynamesh, and the Maya build. Now, the Maya build, we have a video that shows you the basic steps to take when working on a human. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you follow those steps for your gray guy, a gray simple dude, you'll, it, you'll be fine, okay? So just follow that video. It kind of talks about building inside of Maya and different tools you can use. There we go, BMV, grabbing my move tool again. You guys can see really quickly, I can get some pretty good shape. Um, but if I go to my side view, so here he is. Not that great, right? Let me move him back. So again, this is what you guys are gonna be doing. Just a lot of, let me check the front, let me check the side. Just move things around. Take your time, don't try to do this last minute. And guys, with exceptions, um, we do exceptions in the class, but don't use them unless you absolutely need them because this class, you can really quickly snowball on yourselves and just, you know, it just builds up and you end up with more and more stuff to do and it ends up being a mess, okay? So try your best not to use those. If you absolutely need them, that's fine. We will give you guys exceptions, but my advice is try your hardest not to not to use them, okay? So once you are done with this, let's say I'm all done. You know, it's not looking too bad. Um, but once you're done, you're going to want to do the same thing we did before, just do an export. Call this one your Dynamesh. And then hopefully it's all shaped and all sides Save that out, and then you're going to import that into Maya. That's a lot plus the ear and the head. If you're working uh, consistently throughout the week, it's not a lot. Um, as you guys know, online, they ask you guys to put aside 40 hours a week for online. That's what they should have told you when you came in, and that's what they tell us that they tell you. So with 40 hours, you should be able to do it. Yep, and you guys had a lot of assignments last week, too. You still did that. Are there any questions on how to use Dynamesh? And don't be afraid to use any other brushes besides Inflate and Move. You guys can use the Standard, the Clay Buildup, all sorts of stuff. What does Polyframe do? Polyframe just basically toggles on the wireframe. Let me actually jump back. So... It just helps us to see when we first create our Dynamesh, we don't want to go too dense. If we go more dense than this, what's going to happen is it's, it's not going to stay smooth and it's going to be too much geometry to move around. So we want to keep the density visually set here. Um, I set my resolution to 32. Yours might actually be 64 or 128, but <clears throat> excuse me, just know visually you should be matching something like this, okay? Cool. And, but that's what Polyframe does. It just turns on 
the wireframe so we can see what's going on. Were there any other questions on ZBrush? Now I know you guys have the videos and you will get a ton of information in there as well. Um, but if there's nothing else for now, that's okay. We're gonna talk a little bit about the head build. The head build is a step-by-step -step video, all right? So that should make you a little less worried, uh, Christina, <laughs> with your little sad face there. Um, and the ear video is also a step-by-step -step video. The only videos that are not step-by-step -step and more tool-based are the ZBrush ones. The Maya build is very similar. Even though they're showing you a human build, it's very similar to modeling your simple guy. All right. Um, so the head build, looking at facial muscles. Have you guys ever looked at wireframes for a head? I know this past week you guys just did wire draws. So are we seeing any sort of similarities? Yeah. So what we're seeing, we have our edge flow mimicking facial muscles. What? So why do we do that? Why would we take all this time to make these radials around the mouth and the eye? Rigging, def deformation. So when it's animated, it doesn't look creepy and give us weird artifacts. So let me show you guys a really cool example of this. So if we look at this geometry, already it says bad, but this will help. Uh, when we look at this, we see a lot of density. Remember, density is how, is how big these little faces are. So there's a lot of density. We don't have our radials, okay? So that's not good. But what I want you guys to see is this corner of the mouth right here. So I'm going to circle that. I'm going to play this. Watch what happens. Look how poorly that deforms. Somebody had to paint all the weights for this, and it still deforms really poorly. That's not nice, right? You, won't, you don't want to be the poor guy going in and painting all the weights for the face and just still have it deform like this. That's not what the corner of a mouth looks like. Now, let's take a look at this. What's the first thing we notice right off the bat? You guys should be using our vocab terms we've been talking about. The, I'm gonna go to this one again. And then go back to this one. The density, there you go. We have much less density here. Also, you guys said this too, but the edge flow, we have our radials swooping around the mouth like we're supposed to. Okay. So now when I play this, look, I know it's a lot slower, but look how cleanly that corner of the mouth opens and closes in comparison to the other one. So by running our geometry around the mouth and having it follow our facial muscles, we're not using as much geometry, which is awesome. So we have less density and it deforms a lot cleaner than the other model. What would you guys rather paint weights for? This or this? I'd say the good one. <laughs> it's a lot less weights to paint. Okay. Now, when you guys get into shaping the head, okay, there will be a part where Marcus starts talking about pulling out this flat mask into a 3D form. I highly suggest grabbing a screen grab of this image here and using the planes of the face to help you visualize the shapes within the head. Okay, another good thing to do, grab a three quarter of you. Those would be in the wire draws folder from week one in the heads. Grab a three quarter of you and keep that off to the side and use it because it's, it helps, it definitely helps to help you fill in the blanks that, on what the head looks like in that three quarter of you. Match your camera up in your Maya scene and take a look at the contours in that view. Another thing to take a look at and to try actually is draw the planes of the face, these, do you guys have these? Draw those onto your image planes. The reason why I bring this up is because these images are really washed out. There's a ton of, a ton of lights on these poor people. <laughs> They're just completely washed out. So when we're looking at images, sometimes it's hard to tell. There's no shadow. We don't know if, that needs to go away. There we go. We don't know if she has really wide cheeks or if it's just her jawline. But once we draw in these planes of the face, it definitely helps to visualize depth a bit better. And Jason says one of your textbooks for figure drawing has a good reference for that. So check that out too. 
Thank you, Jason, for bringing that up. Yeah, go back to those old books. It will help. So definitely take time to do this. Another thing that's really cool, and I'm going to actually send this to you guys. I was looking for something to show you guys and have for you guys that would help you build your heads. Okay, now the download is here. Um, but if you go to the link I just sent you guys in chat, those of you watching the archive, you're going to have to Google this. Um, but you can actually build a planes of the face mask, which gives you a hands-on three-dimensional planes of the face. Now, this is cool because any other resin model that I was trying to see if I can get you guys was like $80 and up. So I was like, whoa, no way. That'll never happen. <laughs> That's just way too expensive. So this is free. You guys can build it out of paper. Just print it out, cut it up, glue it together. And actually having that in your hands and being able to rotate around it and look at it in different views might help you when you're shaping the head. Okay. Um, you don't have to build that. That is an optional thing. Um, but some more hints and tips. Remember, this is a step-by-step -step project. But as you're working, make sure you turn on border edges and check for unmerged verts. Turn on back face culling. You guys remember me talking about reverse normals last week? Make sure back face culling is on and make sure there's no reverse normals. Um, as you're working, check your work against our edge flow guides. And of course, Marcus is working with you guys in the videos. But if you need another refresher on how the edge flow should look, check those out up on the Google Drive. Um, and look at your model in all angles, not just the front and side view. Grab those three quarter references. Remember, those are in the week one wire draws folder. Now, this is a very, very big one here. I highly recommend. And if I could make it mandatory, I definitely would. Um, I highly recommend you import the skull geometry that we supply you guys on the Google Drive and line it up with your image planes and use that to help get the shape of your character's head. Now, because it's not your subject's exact head, things will not line up exactly. So what I want you guys to try to line up is this area here, okay? All of this and up. Now, the jaw might actually come down here. That's okay. We're not worried about that. But from the, the upper row of teeth and up, match that up as close as you can to the edge of your character in the image planes, front and side, scale it. And that will help you guys get a much more believable human head at the end. And now, if I see heads that are shaped like spheres or boxes, I'm going to know that you didn't take this step. Okay, so make sure that you do this. It's going to help you guys into getting better shape. And I'm going to show you where this is. So in the Google Drive folder, week two, we should have skeleton OBJ. There's female and male. So if you're working on a male, of course, you're going to grab that one. If you're working on the female, grab the female. File import, bring that in, and you'll be good to go. But use that. Because if your skull shape isn't right, everything else will be out of line. You're not going to have an easy time shaping. All right. And the next one, post on Concept Share early. I had a couple emails asking for critiques, which is awesome. That's what I like to see. Uh, post early so you can get those critiques and continue to better your work throughout the week. And, of course, get help from Marcus this Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5 till 9 in chat. Are there any questions on the head build or any sort of hints and tips that are brought up here? Border edges, okay. Border edges are something pretty badass that you can do. Head build, yes, the head build will be done in Maya. Okay, so border edges. I'm just going to create a polygon sphere here to demo this. Okay, so what border edges are, let me hide my grid. And I'm going to delete some of these faces so you can kind of see what it does. Now, I have my sphere here. To turn on border edges, you're going to go to Display, Polygons, Border Edges. Screen grab that so you've got it. Okay, so I'm going to click on this. And right away, it doesn't really look like anything. So we need to edit this so that we can see it better. So we're going to go back into our Display, Polygons, Edge Width. All right, so screen grab that. So this is step two of turning on border edges. Got it? Now 
Now, what this does is it lets us bump up the edge width of our border edges. So if you guys look here, you see what happens? This edge is nice and thick. So what that's telling us is this geometry is not attached to anything. This is open border geometry. So basically, this edge is saying, hey, I'm not merged to anything. And, you know, sometimes that's fine. The head, of course, on the neck or the ear, you're going to have those open areas, and that's okay. But if it's somewhere that there shouldn't be border edges, let's say on in the middle of the cheek, maybe you need to merge a vert there. And that will highlight and tell you, hey, merge the verts. Yes. Yeah, we brought this up for uh, merging vertices. So, like, if, if we just append this shut with the append poly tool, it's not going to be perfect, of course. But you can see right away, they start going away. Um, another tool we can take a look at. This isn't perfect, but that's okay. Um, this is the old split polygon tool. Marcus might use this when it comes to building the ear. I know now you guys have the multi-cut tool here. Um, if you don't like how that works, you can still get the old split polygon tool on your shelf. To do that, you can go down here in your command editor, your script editor, okay? And you just type in split polygon tool exactly how I have it here. All right, so you're going to type that out in your mail. And if you typed it correctly, it'll highlight blue. So then you highlight this with your mouse and then middle mouse drag and drop it to your uh, custom shelf. Now, if ever you need to use it, you can click on it. Here it is. So this is what I prefer to use. Um, I really don't like the multi-cut tool. I'm old school. This, this has been around since Maya's been around. So if it doesn't work, then there's something wrong with your geometry. So th this tool is usually pretty solid. So now I can go in here, merge these. I'm really not used to these weird little bars they came up with, all these different little menus. It's like, man, what'd you do? So many different little merge lists, do that. Um, but if you use these, or use the old split polygon tool, hey, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> there we go. Merge, let's just do a merge the center. There we go. So there we go. Oh, that's why I was highlighting something else. That's what I get for being a sloppy modeler. Don't be a sloppy modeler like me, guys. Follow what Marcus does. He's, he's a much more cleaner modeler than I am. There we go. So once we merge the vertices, you can see that that border edge goes away. Okay. Now the settings for the split polygon tool are the old one. If you want to change them and if you're using this, you just double click on the, the icon here. And by default, these two little check boxes are on. Just uncheck those. And then it'll work just like Marcus has it set up in his videos, okay? So you're just going to, by default, it looks like this. And we're going to just turn that off. And were there any other questions on border edges? Does that answer everybody's question? Yes, awesome, okay. Cool. All right, the ear build. For the ear build, really, you're following a step-by-step -step video again. So just follow that video. If you get stuck, <clears throat> excuse me, just let us know. Use anatomyforsculptors.com. Okay, so for this, if you click on the anatomy button, click on the head icon, and then on the tabs up top, go to blockouts there is an image that shows you the contours of the ear, okay? So remember, you guys did contours last week. This is going to really help with shaping your ear. So use that. It will help. Uh, now, I know there's probably not very many questions on the ear. Um, one big disclaimer. In the video, Marcus is using a different version of Maya. So when you guys are working and he toggles to three mode, he does it pretty early on. Older versions of Maya could toggle to three mode without 
a lot of geometry, newer versions of Maya will not give you a preview. So if it doesn't do that, you're okay. It's just Maya. Just continue working on it until you have more geometry and then hit three mode and you'll be able to see what's going on. So don't panic if three mode doesn't work. Just continue working through that. And here's not too bad. I promise. Marcus explains it really awesomely clear. You guys will love it. You'll be like, oh man, ears, ears are easy now. That video was great. I promise. Okay, so your lecture activity for this week. Remember, this is just a quick activity. I don't want you guys spending more than maybe two, three hours on this, okay? You will be building or sculpting the primary forms of your character that you selected last week and drew the primitives on. You'll be sculpting him this week. So you can get to primary, secondary forms. So have fun with that. If you get sick of working on other things, just jump in and just start working on that for fun. Yes, this will be in ZBrush. So do this inside a ZBrush. Now, after you do your simple builds assignment, it might be easier for you guys to start then, since you'll have a better grasp of Dynamesh and the Z-spheres. And it's up to you how you want to build it. Okay, so this is kind of your free-form open project that you get to have fun with. Um, so here's some student examples. Now this is taking on tertiary forms as well. I don't want to see little tiny bumps and teeth or eyes or any further detail. I just want to see primary forms. So that's nailing down your silhouette. So when I rotate around it, it's going to look just like your character in all views. And your secondary forms, which would be nailing down that anatomy a bit further. Okay. Here's another example. This is all done with tertiary forms. Of course, we can see the notches taken out. Here's another example. So this is all done. So when you're done with that, I want you guys to take screen grabs. Okay, so this should show us primary and secondary model. Uh, show me a, a whole bunch of views just like this. See how they have the different angles? Use the concept share template. Give me a whole bunch of angles, and even having the concept art next to it is really nice so I can see what you guys are making. And put that into the Lecture Activities Week 2 folder. Remember, don't let this take up a whole bunch of your time. I'd rather see you guys do really awesome simple builds and head builds and ear builds. Maybe three hours total on this, okay? It shouldn't be a whole bunch of time. Should it be the same? Yes, it should be the same character that you picked in the week one lecture activity because now you, you have built the primitives for it. You know what it, those forms should be. Now you should be using those primitive forms that you built up in your mind to create the 3D form. Okay. Are there any questions on the lecture activity? Remember, don't take a week on this and then give me, you know, half an ear. I don't want that. <laughs> I'd rather see you guys spending more time on the other assignments. This is just to let you guys decompress and work on something else. And this is in ZBrush, not Maya. So I suggest doing this after you've completed the simple builds assignment so that you know, hey, you know, I didn't like using ZSphere's. I'm going to start this with Dynamesh, or maybe you're the other way around. Maybe you liked using Dynamesh. And you don't like Z-spheres, or, or you like Z-spheres, and you don't want to use Dynamesh, right? Okay, so your week two reminders, you have your lecture activity, which I just went over with you guys. Your simple builds, so that's your Maya, Z-spheres, and Dynamesh builds. These are all going to be exported as OBJs, okay? And then all three of these, so we have our three OBJs here. We're going to have another Maya file here and another one here. All of these are going into one Maya file. And that will be uploaded to FSO. Okay, so you, how many models? So we should see layers. Give me nice layers. Make it nice and organized. Watch your naming, watch your history, transforms, all that fun stuff. And you're going to be doing a discussion. So it doesn't look like much. 
Okay. But Christina, she knows she's been saying, Oh my gosh, this is a lot of work. <laughs> week two is a heavy week. We're, we're throwing you guys in the deep end to see what you can do. So get on it, kick some butt this week. If you need help, really get some help this week. Don't be shy. Don't be like, well, I don't want to ask a question. They're busy. I don't care how busy I am. I'd rather see you guys asking questions and getting help than being shy. All right. Now is not the time to be shy. Christina, definitely. We, we hope to see you guys, all of you, out in open office hours, open lab. Now remember, my office hours are tomorrow from 2 p.m. till 6 on iChat. Um, if you need help from Marcus, he'll be on from 5 till 9 in Hangouts and iChats. And yes, be in Hangouts all week. That door is open 24-7. So even if we're not on, I still set up a study day on Thursday um, for you guys to help each other out. So take advantage of that. Help each other out and be there. It doesn't hurt to network and meet each other too. If you guys make strong connections and network now, you'll feel like, I don't want to fail this class. I want to do awesome and pass with my friends so we can all keep helping each other. <laughs> so do it. It's, it's another motivator and another reason to keep kicking butt in class. So get pumped, get out there, kick some butt, and don't be afraid to get help. I hope all of you guys have an amazing evening, and I will see you all next week.